Happy Friday! Hi everyone, I hope you had a good week. Um, I certainly did. It was an exhausting week and <laughs> it's only six o'clock and it feels like already past midnight, but I had a really great time interacting with you guys. Um, I know there was a pause to our splints review because we did a live call, which was just a really great time. And I want to pick up right where we are left off with the splints by talking about the dorsal block splint today. Day. And I've been doing pictures with short description for all the splints, but today I wanted to do a video to explain this a little further because I think this one's a little more involved and it helps to understand and conceptualize this material. Like I've mentioned before in most of my videos, I think it's really important for you to be able to understand and talk about it rather than just memorizing facts and regurgitating it because you have to be able to apply this knowledge. So what What's a flexor tendon injury and why do you use a dorsal block splint? What the heck is it anyway? A flexor tendon injury occurs when there is an assault or injury to your flexor tendons uh, which allows you to flex or bend your hand hence the flexor tendons. And the flexor tendons are here on the palmar side, and so any deep cuts here uh, to your fingers or your thumb uh, would result in a flexor tendon injury. Uh, or sports, there's another term, it's called a jersey uh, finger and jersey shirt finger. <laughs> I don't recall exactly, but it's where you grab the jersey shirt uh, during sports, and then that could also uh, result in rupture and assault to your flexor tendons or rheumatoid arthritis, a chronic degenerative condition where the tendons weaken over time and become vulnerable to rupturing, right? So at any point when you have a flexor tendon injury, uh, you have to go in there and put it back together uh, with either stitches or sutures. And when that happens, it takes approximately 12 weeks to heal. And we're gonna go over the intervention a little bit later. But uh, during that time, early immobilization is key to making sure that uh, the tendon heals nicely and that you are still able to do tendon gliding to prevent scar adhesion. Okay, so why the dorsal block splint? Well, when you have a flexor tendon injury and that tendon tears apart and ruptures, uh, you want to make sure that it's kept um, in a certain angle so that you don't move it up too much or extend it and rupture it again, right? So you want to make sure that you get a dorsal block splint, which is on the dorsum of your hand, hence dorsal, and it blocks your fingers from extending and um, creating that rupture or injury again. The dorsal block splint will position your wrist at around 20 to 30 degrees. Your MCP joints between 50 to 70. These numbers vary depending on the source you're looking at, but generally speaking, uh, just remember 20 to 30 at wrist, 50 to 74 MCP. And important to note, the IP joints are full in full extension, okay? So that's what the dorsal block splint will look like. And I'll uh, add a photo to this video so you guys can get a visual. And this block splint, this dorsal block splint is used um, during early mobilization. So that's between zero to uh, four weeks is considered early mobilization, but you keep the splint on for about six weeks. Now, why is early mobilization important and what types of early mobilization techniques are out there? And you guys probably heard about this. There's the Duran protocol and the Kleinart. The Duran protocol is where you move passively in extension and flexion using your other finger. And so if this is the injured uh, flexor tendon, you would take your other hand and passively, while your hand is in the splint, uh, flex and passively extend. Okay? And remember, this is early mobilization. And so this splint goes on as soon excuse me, as early as two to three days the, uh, after the operation. So you'll probably still have the stitches on your finger, but you're still moving them passively like that. 
okay anywhere from zero to four weeks you're doing that exercise from about four to six weeks you're gonna start to do uh, differential tendon gliding exercises right tendon gliding is important to make sure that you're keeping that loose that there's movement to prevent scar formation and adhesion um, there's also an exercise called place and hold where you will uh, take your hand and um, Put it in a fist and hold it like that, not too tight because you don't want to put too much pressure, but you would want to imagine something like a butterfly in there. Don't crush it, but keep it close enough so that it doesn't go away. So that's place and hold. And from six to eight weeks, you would start to do light occupation-based activities, continuing to, to still do tendon gliding exercises. And it isn't until you reach week eight, remember, eight weeks that you began to do more strengthening based exercises and then around week 12 uh, you can probably resume normal activities now that was the Duran protocol where you passively flex and passively extend your fingers uh, Kleinart came along and said well I have a better idea uh, why don't we passively uh, flex the finger by attaching a rubber band from the finger to the forearm where it would uh, the traction of the rubber band would provide that passive flexion and when you have that passive flexion your finger is being pulled down what happens when you pull up that's an active extension right so Klein art is passive flexion and active it's extension via a rubber band traction okay so that's the Klein art how do you remember those two apart well I like to think of the Duran as do it yourself Duran do it yourself there's no rubber band you do it on your own you take that finger and you passively flex you passively extend and Klein art says well you don't have to do it yourself because I'm gonna bring that rubber band and then I'm gonna attach to your finger and uh, to your forearm so that it's constantly passively stretching and pulling it down in flexion and you actively extend uh, like I mentioned before both of these protocols are early mobilization techniques and tendon gliding is important throughout but strengthening doesn't occur until week eight okay uh, another important week to remember is week six between six and eight because you uh, get rid of your splint during that time so around six weeks you discharge the splint <clears throat> my voice is changing see this is how tired I am today was a really long day um, what else? Oh, I want to also mention the no man's land. Uh, that zone two is known as the no man's land. And that's because here from metacarpal here to the middle of the middle phalanx, that used to be an area, used to be because uh, we now are so advanced that we can treat this area, but no man attempted to treat that area due to the high risk of complication in zone two. And so that's also known as the no man's land. But due to advanced skills and technology and advances and hand therapy, particularly with occupational therapists going in there, we are now able to treat the no man's land. But that's a zone two for your reference, okay? I think that's it. So I will continue on with splints throughout next week and the week following. And for all the new members, we have a lot of new members this week. Welcome. Uh, we're really glad to have you here. I hope you become active members, but even if you choose to be a silent member, I hope that you find everything you need here to help you on your journey towards becoming an OTR, COTA, uh, someone who will advance our profession. So welcome. Um, just a reminder, I do have a Facebook OT Mary page where I'm beginning to slowly transition some of the material over. So if you haven't, uh, be sure to like that page and follow it so that you can stay up to date. Okay, that's it for today. I may or may not do a video tomorrow. It depends on how I feel. Uh, if you guys watched my latest video on YouTube, you know that I was recently diagnosed with a chronic condition that doesn't have a cure, but I remain optimistic and the outpouring of support and love I received from you guys has just been so healing and comforting. So thank you so much for all your love and messages. I'm not going anywhere. This disease does not define me or my productivity. Um, I'm here with you guys. 
All right, that's it for today. Have a great weekend. Talk to you guys later. Bye.